Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a granny square. I know there's tons and tons and tons of granny square tutorials out there. This is going to be nothing new, but a lot of people want to know how I made my sweater and it starts off with a basic granny square. So this is just how I do it. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. So let's get into it. This is the specific granny square that I'm going to be making. You can add or subtract colors or rounds as you see fit. The first color I'm starting with is Big Twist Value in the color Jade Green. Then I'm using Big Twist Value in the color Slime. The third row is Big Twist Value in the color Aqua. The next one is Big Twist Value in the color Dark Teal. And then lastly, I'm using Big Twist Value Pound Plus in the color Black. You will also need a scissor, a crochet hook, I am using a 5.5 millimeter clover hook, and a darning needle. I like to use a longer needle. If you like a smaller one, have at it, whatever you like to use. And let's get started. I'm going to start with a slip knot. How I'm going to do that, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my fingers to make a loop. I'm going to take the short tail of my yarn and put that through that loop that I made and pull it tight. That is going to give me a slip knot. That is what I'm going to use to start this granny square. Now I'm going to start with a chain four. One, two, three, four. That's just a yarn over and pull through. Again, that is a slip knot, yarn over and pull through for a chain. Chain four, one, two, three, now I'm going to slip stitch into this first chain and that's going to give us a circle. This circle is what we're going to work into. Now if you don't like this circle you could also do a magic ring. That does tend to be a little bit more difficult for people. For a magic ring quickly I will loop the yarn over my two fingers. This small tail will be over the top. I'm going to go under here over this short tail and pick up the yarn here and pull up a loop here. That is your circle. I'm going to chain two and there's your circle that you're going to be working in right here. So then you would place your double crochet into that circle. But again, magic circle is very difficult for a lot of people. That's too difficult. Go back to that chain four. So for my slip knot, we're going to chain four, one, yarn over two, yarn over three, yarn over four. Okay, we're going to slip stitch into that first chain. And we're going to chain two, one, two. Now some people like to chain three, I only like to chain two, whatever works for you. You do you, boo boo. Now we're going to put two double crochet into this ring that we just made. I like to crochet over this tail. It's going to help us pull it tight. Okay, so yarn over, insert your hook into the loop. You're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that's your double crochet. We're going to do that one more time. Yarn over, insert into our ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's your double crochet. Now, that's our first cluster. This chain start, counts as our cluster. That is our first double crochet cluster. So now we're going to chain two. Again, you could chain three in your corner if you want to. I like to chain two. That is what I like to do. Now we're going to put three more double crochet into this loop. So that's one, two, Three, that is our second double crochet cluster. This is a granny square, so it has four sides. Chain two and put three more double crochet. One, two, three. Chain two. And that's one, two, three. We need three more. One, two, and three. Okay, so now we have four double crochet clusters of three. So we're gonna chain two and you're gonna slip stitch into that chain. Now I'm gonna slip stitch actually into that double crochet stitch because that's where I like to put it. 
but you can put that slip stitch wherever you like. All right. And that yarn split on me, so I'm gonna chain one. Woo! Throw my needle across the room and cut my yarn. That is the start of my granny square. Now, because I crocheted over this tail, I'm gonna be able to pull this tight just like a magic ring. So now I'm gonna move on to my next color. We're gonna go on to slime. I'm going to start with a slip knot. I'm leaving myself a generous tail. I just find that it's gonna be easier to tuck in my end that way. I'm gonna insert my hook into the same spot where my chain was. I like to keep all of them in the same spot. Insert it into that chain space and I'm gonna chain one. And that's how I'm gonna attach the yarn with that chain. It's now attached. It's now on there. It's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna chain two more and that's gonna count as my first double crochet. So now in that chain space, you're gonna place two more double crochet. One, two. This is that pesky, pesky tail. Now we have to get to the next chain space. That's where our next stitch is going to go. Now there are two different ways that you can do this. You can just yarn over and go right on in there with your next double crochet cluster of three, or you can chain one and then do your cluster of three. I have been finding I like to chain one before I do my next cluster. I have found that it keeps it just a little bit more square. You can see on this one, there's a chain in between each of these clusters. I've just found that it just keeps it a little bit neater. So that's what I like to do in each corner. Again, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, three double crochet in the next corner, one, two, three, chain two. And in that same space, again, we're gonna put three more double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain two, one, two, three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one. Now we're back to where we started, but each corner gets two sets of clusters. So I'm going to put three more double crochet in this corner, chain two, and then again, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that space. Again, I put it in the double crochet. You could put it in the chain. You have fun. Put it where you want it. Chain one. Boop. This needle keeps magnetizing to my scissor. And there you go. Again, I just think that this chain keeps it a little bit more square, but whatever works for you. Now we're going to attach our third color. I'm going to attach the blue the same way that I did every other color, except I want to leave a little bit more tail than that. It's a bad habit of not leaving myself enough room. I just find it easier if I have a longer tail in the long run to sew in this tail later. I prefer a longer tail. That's just my personal preference. Again, this is where all of my chains have been, so I'm going to keep it in the same spot. That's that chain space. Voop. Chain one, two, three. Two double crochet, one. Voop, get that other pesky tail out of there. Two, that's my first cluster. Chain one. Now we're not at a corner, we just have a chain space. In the chain one space, you're gonna put three double crochet. That's gonna be your double crochet cluster. So that's one, two, whoop, three, chain one, and then in the corner, you're going to put two double crochet clusters with two chains in between. So let's do one, two, three, chain two, one, two, three. And it's going to repeat the exact same pattern all the way around. So in every chain one space, you're going to put three double crochet one, two, three, chain one. 
And in the corner, you're gonna put two clusters with two chains in between. So that's one, two, three, two chains, one, two, three. So those two chains just help you turn the corner so you can get all the way around. And you're just gonna keep repeating that pattern all the way around the square. When you get back to your starting point, again, you're just gonna add your three double crochet to finish out this corner. And then slip stitch into the top of your chain or into your double crochet. As we continue this square, the pattern is going to just continue. So in this corner, again, we're going to chain up with our two double crochet. Every chain one space, that's where we're going to put a cluster of three double crochet. And in every corner, we're going to put three double crochet, two chains to turn the corner, and another three double crochet all the way around. For this specific granny square, I want one more round of black, so I'm going to attach it and do one more round of the exact same pattern.
And that is how I made this granny square. And once you have your granny squares, you can make so many different things with your granny squares. You don't just have to make a blanket. Well, now all that's left to do is tuck in all of those ends. That's what that needle, handy dandy needle is for. That's why I find the bigger needle easier. I promise it makes a world of a difference. I did not think it was going to, especially when you're sewing squares together, if you choose the sewing method to sew them together. But yeah, it's a square. I have made so many different things with granny squares. I've made bags, I've made dog sweaters, I've made sweaters, I've made blankets, I've made baby blankets. I So many different squares, so many different variations on the granny square, so many different things you can put in the granny square. You you really can do so many different things with just a regular granny square. And there's so many different ways that you can attach them together as well. I'm going to make another tutorial for a different granny square. Um, for how I like to do my daisy granny square, just because it's gonna be a little bit hard to see how I put them together with the black. So with the blue, it'll just be easier to see how I do that. But so this was the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys liked it. I hope I didn't crochet too fast. If I did, you can slow down the video in YouTube. I don't know how you do that, but I know you can do it. But now that I have two of these together, I can show you guys how I get it to do that. So if you like this video and you're excited to see how I turn it into a sweater, let me know below and let me know what else you guys want to see. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know what else you guys want to see and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.